when we're talking about coordinate systems with our vector components, so far we talked about north, south, east, and west. And you'll notice that that follows the traditional version that you would see in your math classes, where the positive y direction is up and the positive x direction is to the right, whereas these would be your negatives. So we're still going to have like our quadrants one, two, three, and four, like you would in a math class. With this right here being 90 degrees. Now this is important for when it comes to the decomposition of vectors. Now, what we mean when we say a decomposition of vectors is let's say we have this first quadrant. And within this quadrant, we are given a vector. Let's call it vector A. Okay? And if we take the decomposition of a vector, that means that we want to break it up into component vectors. And what component vectors are, are vectors that are parallel to these axes. Here, of course, this point would have some x and y value. And what our component vectors are, are just those pure x and y values of that vector. This one being a sub x and this one being a sub y. Which would mean that our overall vector a would be equal to the sum of vector a sub x plus vector a sub y. So let's look at some more decomposition so that we can see it in more than just one quadrant. All right, so let's look at this vector and breaking it up. We have its tail at 1, 1, and its tip at negative 1, 3. So let's see about breaking this up into components. Our component vector for the x direction would go from 1 all the way over to negative 1. That would be our x component of b. Whereas our y component would go from 1 up to 3. And that would be our y component of our b vector. All right, now let's look at vector C here. How would we break up into its component vectors? Well, it's starting at negative 1, 2 at its tail, and then its tip goes all the way to 3, negative 1. So if we were to deal with our x component vector, it would go from negative 1 all the way to positive 3. Just like our y component would go from up here at positive 2 down to negative 1. So we would have our y and our x components of our vector. You might be wondering, well, how do I find these sides if maybe the picture isn't quite as clear? So. There are some handy dandy equations that we can use in order to figure this all out. So let's say we are in quadrant one and we have our vector A. Okay? How we find AX is that it is equal to a cosine of theta with this angle right here being theta. How we find our y component, which you could either draw over here or over here to make it into a right triangle, would be a y 
equals a sine of theta. And our A right here can come from the Pythagorean theorem with A x squared plus A y squared being equal to A. And how this theta can be found is the inverse tangent of AY over AX. So this makes it so depending on what you're given, you're able to possibly find the X or Y components, or if you're given the X and Y components, you can work in order to find possibly the magnitude of vector A. So the magnitude of A comes from the square root of A sub X squared plus A sub Y squared. A Y comes from A sine theta. A X would come from A cosine theta. We can find theta as the inverse tangent of A Y over A X. Now what if we are over in this fourth quadrant and we have vector B with its component vectors? So we would have b sub y and b sub x. We can find b sub x with b sine b if b being this angle right here. Or b sub y using b cosine b. Just like with our A magnitude up here, our B magnitude would be equal to BX squared plus BY squared. However, this time our B is equal to the inverse tangent of BX over the absolute value of by. And we say the absolute value because here our by would be negative as if this is the fourth quadrant, the y's are negative in the fourth quadrant, whereas the x's are going to be positive. So since that may seem a little bit confusing just thrown at you, let's do an example with finding the component of an acceleration vector. So as seen from above, a hummingbird's acceleration is 6.0 meters per second squared, 30 degrees south of west. So we have that the acceleration is 6.0 meters per second squared, 30 degrees south of west. So southwest. We want to find the X and Y components of the acceleration vector A. All right, so if we think about our north, south, east, and west, it would mean that this hummingbird is going in this direction, southwest, all right? So they're going six meters per second squared at 30 degrees southwest, which means that they're going to be in that third quadrant. And if they're 30 degrees south of west, that means that our 30 degrees is this angle right here because they're 30 degrees south of the west, okay? This is our acceleration vector and we have been asked to find the two components. So, if we're going to find those two components, AX and AY, we need to think about how we're going to do it for a second. So if we're looking for AX, we are going to find that by doing negative A cosine of theta. All right? AY will be negative A sine of theta. Why did we choose sine and cosine? Sine is 
Sakatoa. All right. For AX, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, we know that this 30 degrees is reflected here to also make it 30 degrees. All right. So the adjacent over hypotenuse, which gives us 30 degrees, is going to give us our AX. For a y, we use sine because sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And here, opposite over hypotenuse, it's going to give us that opposite of the angle, which is that a y. Our a magnitude is 6 meters per second squared. Our theta is 30 degrees. So we're going to get negative 6 cosine of 30 and negative 6 sine of 30. Negative 6 cosine of 30 is going to give us negative 5.19 meters per second squared. And negative 6 sine of 30 is going to give us negative 3 meters per second squared. And we made them negative because you'll notice that with these arrows, both of them are going into that negative with the quadrant. As in quadrant three, both the X and the Y are considered to be negative. So those are going to be our components of the acceleration vector A. All right, so component AX is negative 5.19 meters per second, and component AY is negative 3 meters per second squared. All right, so this graph shows a car's velocity vector V. And we want to determine the car's speed and direction of motion. So the speed is going to be our magnitude of the velocity, correct? So since, thankfully, once again, these would make into right triangles, we are going to be able to use that our C is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared, which here will be Vx and Vy. Our Vx is negative 6. And our VY is positive 4. So negative 6, positive 4. If we do the square root of negative 6 times positive 4, we get that our magnitude of the velocity is equal to 7.21 meters per second. But we're also asked to find the direction of this motion. In order to find the direction of the motion, we know that the tangent of theta is equal to the y over the x, so 4 over 6, because remember we do the absolute value, which means that our inverse tangent of 4 over 6 is going to be equal to our theta, which is 33.69 degrees. So our magnitude of our velocity is 7.2 meters per second, and our direction is 33.69 degrees, which means that our vector V is equal to 7.21 meters per second, 33.69 degrees northwest, or north of west. Or you could consider it 33.69 degrees above the x-axis if you're not given directions such as north and west. I will see you tomorrow, and I hope the video wasn't too bad. Have a nice day.